It's about bringing banking services to the globally unbanked, which is actually a real issue. Here we are in 2019, the globally unbanked, people not having any access to banking services is a real deal. Taking the world by storm, demystifying the consequences of Facebook's Libra. Facebook's proposed global cryptocurrency is disrupting national regulators and central bank processes. With turmoil brewing, will Libra get stopped in its tracks, or is it simply an unstoppable force? Gordon Einstein, Crypto Law Partners. Hello, everyone. How's the energy level this afternoon? Yay! You don't, it's not for Libra, it's for Malta. Yay! All right, fantastic. All right, good afternoon. I'm Gordon Einstein. I'm a lawyer from Los Angeles. I flew here just to talk to all of you. So I'm honored, thank you. Um, I'm gonna be speaking about Facebook's proposed cryptocurrency, Libra. And before I dive in, I wanna be clear. I'm not an advocate for Libra. I don't work for them. I'm not for it, I'm not against it. I just think it's really interesting because what it says about central banking, what it says about monetary policy, what it says about crypto, what it says about regulation, and what it says about Bitcoin, all right? So I'm not a, I'm, well maybe if they, I'm not a big, I'm not a Libra shill, but if they pay me a hefty ransom, I might be. We'll see. Okay, I'm a lawyer, I'm not your lawyer, I talk fast, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what is Libra exactly? Again, Libra is, what may be a cryptocurrency, depends who you ask, being proposed by Facebook. Specifically, it's being proposed or put forward by Facebook's fully owned subsidiary, Calibra. Facebook technically doesn't have any direct involvement. The idea behind Libra is that people should be able to send value to anyone else on the planet as easily as sending a text message, as easily as sending an email. Who thinks that sounds a little bit like Bitcoin? Raise your hand if you think it does. Cool, raise your hand if you want to raise your hand no matter what I say. Okay, awesome, thanks guys. All right, and the idea is that on top of this basic functionality of sending value back and forth, there'll be a suite of additional financial services built by either Calibra, its collaborators, or other companies. So again, you got Facebook, you have its wholly owned subsidiary Calibra, and then you have what was meant to be the Libra Association, which we'll talk about in a second here. Okay, so this slide is intentionally dated. Back when I first did this deck, or first prepared this presentation, there was some nice graphic that I stole uh, with all the members of the proposed Libra Association, with Calibra just going to be one of those many members. And the idea was that this association was going to launch Libra sometime in 2020. By the way, raise your hand if you think Libra will actually launch in 2020. Are you not raising your hand? You do. I'll, Scotch bet? McCallum bet? Lafroy bet? I'll, I'll bet you whiskey. Okay, so initially, this grouping, this Libra Association was starting out with 100, sorry, with 28 members and was supposed to grow up to, say, 100 members when Libra finally launched in 2020. So you have all these private equity companies, you have big companies that you know, like Coinbase, you have Facebook and Calibra, so small, so insignificant, don't mind them. Uh, you have eBay, Uber and Lyft, God knows why. And then you have all these payment providers that you would think that if Libra ever comes to work, would be put out of business. Yet there they are, supposedly starting as part of the Libra Association. It's interesting to see who's not on here. No Apple, no Google, no IBM, no, no American Express, no Asia. Oh yeah, we're missing Asia. No India, no China. Kind of an interesting little oversight. Now, people dropped out of this association because of all the regulatory pullback. That whole right column is no longer part of the Libra Association. Because basically the US Congress threatened those companies and said, if you pursue Libra, we're not only gonna give that a very hard regulatory look, but we're gonna look at your existing businesses, those perfectly legal businesses, and give you a hard time. Who thinks that the government should tell people, hey, you're perfectly legal businesses, we're gonna give those a hard time if you do, do something else that we don't like? Okay, welcome to the democracy. Also, as beginning members, we had Women's World Banking 
I mean, personally, I think if you're going against something that has Women's World Banking involved, you're going to hell. So, I mean, come on, it's Women's World Banking. I mean, uh, all right. So, again, what is Libra's mission? They said or say it's about bringing banking services to the globally unbanked, which is actually a real issue. Here we are in 2019, and I'll get to another slide, but the globally unbanked, people not having any access to banking services is a real deal. So, again, it claims to be about bringing banking services to the unbanked, mainly through mobile devices, using a permissioned, I mean, in other words, a not wide open, blockchain global digital cryptocurrency. Now, if you want to read more about Libra, understand how it works, there's actually two white papers. Even Bitcoin only had one white paper, but Libra has two, because it's special. So you have Calibra put out a white paper that's sort of the, the technical documents, the Libra blockchain. It has 30 authors. I've never seen a uh, white paper of 30 authors. They all work for Calibra, and I looked them up on LinkedIn. They're all over the world. It's kind of interesting. And then the actual Libra Association itself came out with the white paper that's sort of a marketing document with no author. So go figure it out. This is the gentleman that's in charge of Calibra. He's got an interesting background. He came out with a patent maybe 10 years ago, and this is right on Google Patents if you look it up. It's about how to send money using a text message or a mobile device. Basically, this guy took his patent from 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, whenever, 15 years ago actually, and just kind of redid it on blockchain, and now this is forming the basis of Calibra. This is David Marcus. Interesting background, he went to University of Geneva, which is actually where the Libra Association is based, uh, started a company, Zong, based on this patent. That got acquired by PayPal, that got acquired by Coinbase, and then he ended up at Facebook. This poor guy sat in front of both houses of Congress in the United States answering questions about Libra, and I watched all 18 hours of his testimony. I don't know if I liked him before, but I really appreciate his patience putting up with their stupid questions. Can you imagine sitting in front of Congress for 18 hours answering questions? I mean, these are people who don't understand what the internet is. So, God bless David Marcus. All right, there's not really time, enough time to go through all this, but the a really key idea behind Libra is, if you're gonna have a global currency, it's not very helpful if it fluctuates up and down like Bitcoin or even the US dollar. You want it to be relatively stable. Okay, you want what's called a low volatility currency. But <laughs> Libra is not a stable coin. It's not tether, it's, it's not tied to another asset that, on a one-for-one -one basis. By the way, raise your hand if you think tether actually has a dollar backing up each individual tether. I hope no one, really? Really, I'll, I'll take that bet, I'll take that bet too. Bullshit, no, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so Libra is interesting because it's not a stable coin, it's not a scarcity coin like Bitcoin, it's not an inflation coin like the dollar. It's actually backed, but not exchangeable for something called the Libra Reserve, which is you have a pool of stable or, sem or semi-stable assets backing it up. So it's a reserve-based crypto, not a stable coin, not a fluctuating crypto. And the idea is that when people buy Libra, these assets or these funds are gonna be invested in other currencies like dollars, like euros, or low, low volatility assets like government bonds. But when you sell Libra and cash out, you don't get the reserve you get your local currency, whatever you decide to buy with it. Now, the globally unbanked issue is real. You can see it in the global south. And there's obviously a ton of people that don't have banking services, and I've got to move fast here. But where's Facebook? It's in India. Okay, notice there was no one in, by the way, I didn't know this. I looked up where all the Facebook users live. I thought the United States would be first. It's not. It's India, and then you have the global south, except for the United Kingdom. And by the way, the United Kingdom is joining the Global South the moment Brexit happens. Libra's gotten a mixed technical reaction. Some people say it sucks like Ethereum. I don't think that's a compliment. Other people say that it's well designed. By the way, it's not blockchain and it's not crypto. Now, I actually went to Libra. Okay, I'm a lawyer who actually gets out from behind his desk and goes crashes other people's businesses. I went to Geneva where it's based. I looked them up. I went to their address. I went outside. I went inside. Guess what? That is a co-working facility. There's no Libra Association in Libra. Okay? I went inside and I lied. I said, hey, I want co-working space. Okay? And when I was in there doing my tour, I took a photo of the people who work in this co-working space. Guess what? There's no Libra. But there's PayPal. 
Okay, so now PayPal has now since then dropped out of the Libra Association, so I don't know where these people live now, but there's no actual Libra Association at Libra. That doesn't mean it won't happen though, because if you go to Switzerland where this is all based, it's a whole bunch of placards on the outside of buildings with no one actually working there. But you know, that's the way things work now. Okay, so PayPal has bowed out of Libra and probably because they're doing, working with China. Ba -ba -ba, moving faster. This is a regulatory pushback in the US. They actually complained to, about too many things. The Libra's based out of Switzerland. Oh my God, how dare you base anything out of Switzerland? And it can challenge the US dollar. That's kind of interesting. They put in writing that Libra can challenge the US dollar. Think how vulnerable the dollar has to be for that to be the case. But it's not just the US pushing back. The UK, actually I gotta move faster, it was Germany and France who said, quote, we believe that no private entity can claim monetary power which is inherent to the sovereignty of nations. If that's true, why do we have the euro? Oh yeah, it's a minor detail. Meanwhile, Russia loves that because you know, anything that messes with the US dollar, they're like neutral about it, they're like, okay. And of course, naturally, China says, oh, a state cryptocurrency? We were doing that five years ago, we launched tomorrow. Now, again, this is a 30 minute, well, this is a 30 minute presentation that I crunched them to 10. There's something very interesting happening, and David Marcus pointed this out as well, which is, why has Bitcoin not been regulated to death? Well, part of it, of course, is distributed and decentralized, so it's hard to regulate it to death, that's part of its design. But I think a big part of it is that Bitcoin has not fulfilled its mission of being a currency, of being an exchange of value. You know, I always ask audiences, you know, who buys coffee of Bitcoin? And there's always a couple of people who raise their hand. I'm sure there would be in this group too. But most of us day to day are not using Bitcoin to buy coffee. I wish we could, because I love coffee. But it hasn't fulfilled that role. I think that's actually spared Bitcoin from regulatory attack. I think the reason everyone is pouncing on Libra is it does pose a risk, realistic opportunity, a realistic, um, is advancing a realistic proposition for having a day to day usable currency. And that's fundamentally a threat to national currencies and central banks. Okay, so that's my really fast 10 minute presentation on Libra and now we're gonna have a panel and clap.